Good morning and welcome to the Friday morning Bible study uh, here at Faith Presbyterian Church. And so glad you were able to participate. If you have your Bibles, uh, I invite you to turn them to the book of Psalms. Um, as we're walking through uh, the book of Psalms and, and we're looking uh, to, to where God comforts his people in the midst of trial and tribulation. Um, and the reason for the Psalms is because, that, you know, every human emotion is represented in the Psalms. You have joy and you have depression, you have uh, anxiety and you have um, jubilant worship, which is what, what we're going to look at tonight. So if you have your Bibles or this morning, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, I'm getting my days and mornings mixed up. Is that happening to you? I mean, you don't even know if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. Um, it's it, it's crazy, but but anyway, it's Friday morning, all right. So this morning, uh, take your Bibles and turn with me to Psalm uh, chapter forty-seven. We're gonna we're gonna look at Psalm forty-seven, and I don't know I don't know if you know this or not, but um, to worship God with joy and with what and with much noise, um, with much clamoring, is a command. Uh, you know. When you look at the worship of God's people in the Old Testament, you, you see them dancing, you see them banging the cymbal, you see them banging the drum, you see them uh, shouting with loud shouts of joy. Um, I think many of us kind of uh, interpret God, interpret God wanting his wanting his people to worship him in in severe reverence and severe quiet, you know, um, as as if we're supposed to be going. Shh, When actually, uh, oftentimes, the opposite is true, that, that when it comes to worshiping a God who has uh, come to us in our sin, in our uh, transgression, in our death state, if you will, spiritually, uh, a God who approaches us and condescends to us in grace, he comes and chases, at, chases after us. And not only that, but, but he, he dies on a cross, he dies the death that we deserve, and he is resurrected unto life, winning the victory over sin and death. And in turn, we receive the life uh, that, that, that he uh, won for us in his resurrection. When we understand the broad scope of the gospel in, in our hearts and minds, it should cause us to be a little noisy, should it not? Should it cause us to, to clap our hands and stomp our feet? Um, and, and so when, when it comes to worf worshiping God with, with reverence, we always want to apply our definition of reverence. But God's definition of reverence is louder than our def definition of reverence. God's definition of, of uh, worshiping God in fear is, is uh, much more joyful than our definition of worshiping God in, in fear. And so we are to fear the Lord, we are to revere the Lord, and yet at the same time, we are to be loud in the Lord um, because our hearts are overjoyed with what God has done for us. And so take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 47. And let me read Psalm 47 if you will. It's only, what, about uh, nine verses. And so Psalm 47, I'm going to read verses one to nine. Listen, for this is God's word. The psalmist writes, uh, clap your hands, all peoples, Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth sing praises with a song god reigns over the nations god sits on his holy throne the princes of the peoples gather as the people of the god of abraham for the shields of the earth belong to god and he is highly exalted well first of all notice the imperatives here notice the command that is given in psalm 47 look at verse 1 clap your hands in the original hebrew this is a command God is commanding his people to clap their hands. Look at the second line there in verse 1. Shout to God. Another command, you are to shout, you are to clap your hands. Where if many of us did this in worship, if somebody clapped their hands, 
and started shouting to the Lord in joy over the gospel, many of us would turn our heads and look at them. And maybe many of us would call security and some of the guys who do security for us to come into the sanctuary and to escort that person out of the building because they are disturbing things, right? We are God is commanding the disturbance. And in fact, it's not a disturbance at all. Um, it is a natural, holistic a part of worshiping God when one truly realizes who God is in relation to who we are and what God has done to bring us unto himself. And look at the comprehensive nature of this command. Look, it says, clap your hands, all peoples, exclamation point. In other words, it, it, it's giving a, a picture of the greatness of God here to, to, such a, to such a degree. There is an expectation that all nations, all peoples, all tribes of, 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 of many tongues will worship God with joy. And they will clap their hands in worship. And then look at the next line. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Loud songs of joy. Beloved, we're not commanded to sing on key. Uh, we're not commanded to be concerned with our own voices and how we sound when we sing. I, I, I don't have a very good singing voice. I don't, I'm not really concerned with what you think, uh, with how you think about how loud I sing. What I'm concerned about is my relationship with God in the midst of worship. Do I truly see the glory of God? Do I truly understand and taste and savor the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is the Holy Spirit empowering me to worship the Lord with joy and with gladness? And so therefore, I want my heart to sing. I don't want my mind to sing. I don't want my voice to sing. I want my heart to sing. And oftentimes it doesn't mean that you can carry a tune. It means that you are, are seeing a, a beautiful vision of who God is. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. Well, notice the next line, verse two, it begins with four, four, because of, this is why you are to clap your hands. This is why you, this is why you are to shout to God with loud songs of joy for the Lord, the most high is to be feared. Now notice that. All right, here we go. The Lord, the most high is to be feared, is to be revered. Now for many of us, fearing the Lord does not fall into the same um, category as clapping your hands and shouting to God with loud songs of joy. But here the psalmist equates the two. The psalmist says, not only are they in the same category, that, that, but they walk hand in hand. To fear the Lord in worship is to clap your hands, is to shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the most high is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. And notice that this is not contingent upon our circumstances. This is not contingent upon us uh, upon us ex experiencing a pandemic or not experiencing a pandemic. This is not contingent upon us being quarantined or not being quarantined. Our businesses opened or not opened. Our jobs secure or our jobs uh, insecure. This is not contingent on any circumstance. This is only contingent upon one thing and one thing alone. And what is that one thing? The Lord is a great king over all the earth. Brothers and sisters, that will never change. That will never change. God will always be a great king over the over all the earth. That is that is a sure thing. You can bank on that. That will never change. Nothing will take God off his throne and nothing will thwart God's purposes. Therefore, in every circumstance, we clap our hands. We shout to God with loud songs of joy. Why? Because this is what he's done. Listen to what he's done. In verses 3 and 4, we were told that he, the Lord, subdued people under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. The, the psalmist addresses two things. The, the Israel, they were to march into the into the promised land and they were to eradicate all the Canaanite people there in the promised land and they were to occupy the promised land because that was God's chosen uh, a place for his people to actualize God's presence because God made a promise, right? And then he says in verse four, he chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. And so not only did, did God subdue all nations under us, not only did God subdue his enemies and our enemies under our feet, but he also chose us as his inheritance. He loved us before the foundation of the world. 
So God uh, destroyed the enemies of God's people and God, his own enemies. And he also set his electing love on his people. Well, hasn't God done this for us in the gospel? In fact, if you went to Romans 16, we're told in Romans 16 that, 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 that Paul tells the church in Rome that, that the, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. He subdued peoples under us. Our greatest enemy, God will crush under our feet. And then the Lord Jesus will take him and cast him into the lake of fire. That's already a sure thing because of the cross and resurrection. So shouldn't we shout with joy? Shouldn't we clap our hands? Shouldn't we sing loud songs of joy before the Lord? He chose our inheritance for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. We are his chosen, his, his, his treasured possession in his son, Jesus Christ. Now look at verses five and six. Listen to this. This is a very strange uh, verse, but, but once you know it's, it's historical background, it's not so strange. It says that God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the, tr with the sound of a trumpet. What, is, what does that mean? What, what is the psalmist referring to here? Well, the psalmist is alluding to, to 2 Samuel chapter 6. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, uh, the Ark of the Covenant was brought back into Jerusalem after it was captured um, by, by the Philistines. And, and David is dancing before the Ark as it is being marched back into Jerusalem. So, so get this thing. There's David dancing and shouting. God's people are shouting and clapping. And they are blowing trumpets. It is chaos. <laughs> It is a party. It is a festival. I mean, the earth is shaking because God's people are so overjoyed that the ark was coming back into Jerusalem. Why were they overjoyed about the ark was about the ark coming back into Jerusalem? Because the ark represented God's presence. The ark represented God's favor. That God was returning back to his people. God was, was actualizing his presence, manifesting his presence among his people again. Why? Because he is enthroning his chosen king upon the throne of his peoples well in the gospel god has gone up with a shout we have the presence of god within us through the person and work of the holy spirit because of what of what christ did on the cross because of the work of christ we have the presence of god in us we no longer need an ark we don't need indiana jones out there looking for it we no longer need to see it touch it or have it in our possession why because we possess God and God possesses us. And so in effect, God has gone up with a shout within us. The Lord with, us, with the sound of a trumpet. So therefore, verse six, again, sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. The repetition, the, the exclamation points. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a Psalm. And notice that these commands to sing praises, to clap hands, to, to, to sing uh, loud songs with joy, it's followed with something that God has done. It's a response to the redeeming work of God among his people. And then this universal statement in verse 8, God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. In the original Hebrew, this is in the present tense. God is right now reigning over the nations. God is right now sitting on on his holy throne it's as if the psalmist is is closing out this psalm as if to sort of set the scene for us as an unforgettable scene all right so as you walk away from the psalm reader as as you're shouting and clapping your hands always remember god is reigning over the nations right now god is god god is seated on his holy throne right now so don't stop clapping don't stop shouting don't stop singing don't stop revering, but always in perpetuity be doing these things in response to what God has done for you and in response to who God is in being the king over all the earth. I, I want to encourage you with something. Maybe tomorrow morning, uh, set your mind to memorizing this psalm. This would be a great way to preach the gospel yourself every single morning. Set your mind to, to memorize one line of the psalm every day, all right, for the next seven days. And then let that become your song that you sing unto the Lord in your own heart 
as you look out into the world and you see that that, that this you know the, the the chaos and the and the the, the trial and the tribulation is taking place when you see all this and you're watching the news and listening to the news you're like when is this ever going to end you can you can look at psalm 47 or you as you can recall it as you memorize psalm 47 and you can say wait a minute god reigns over all the nations god sits on his holy throne therefore i will clap my hands i will sing loud songs of joy i will sing praises i will sing praises to my king and in preaching the gospel to yourself in this way your joy cannot be shaken in the midst of trial and tribulation. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your holy word. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but your word, your word stands forever. Father, help us to hide your word in our, heart, in our hearts so that we may not sin against you, so, so that our joy may not be shaken. Help us to sing loud songs of joy. <laughs> while clapping our hands for you and for your glory. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who is the cause of this joy, who is the cause of this worship, who is the cause of all this commotion in our hearts. Thank you, O oh God, for being so good to us and being so gracious. And all these things asking your son's precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, just uh, once again, I want to remind you that uh, this Sunday morning, we're going to we're going to open our doors cautiously to allow people to come back into the to, into the uh, building to worship with us. Um, two services Sunday morning, one one at 11 and one at 630. Um, and so if your last name begins with A through H, uh, come to the morning service and the, and the rest of you come to the evening service at 630. We're doing this to uh, to to uh, practice properly practice uh, social distancing. Um, if you want to bring your own hand sanitizer, please do so. If you feel more comfortable wearing gloves and or a mask, then please come. My wife made us uh, cloth masks. And, a for, and of course, uh, my cloth mask is a Green Bay Packers themed mask. Um, and uh, I won't be wearing it to preach Sunday morning, but 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 occasionally I, I'm going to be wearing it out and about maybe in the grocery store or whatnot. But um, but we'll, we'll, but we want to do what it, what it takes to to make you feel safe to come to this building to worship. But if you do not feel safe, if you are elderly and you have pre-existing conditions that, that make you at risk of getting sick, um, or if you just don't feel safe coming into this building, then then, uh, then, then we're going to be doing something. We're going to try to do Facebook Live. We're going to try to live stream the service this Sunday morning um, at 11 o'clock. And, and so I'm going to have more information for you uh, as the as the as the uh, day draws nigh. Um, but but at the very least, we are going to record it at the same time, and the recording will be on the Facebook page. I mean, I'm sorry, on the YouTube uh, church church page, YouTube uh, church channel. Um, but but it won't be posted until about 1 or 1.30 because it has to be uploaded. It takes a little bit of time to upload. And so make sure that you're aware of those things. Um, but I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. I look forward to seeing you soon. And, and uh, please know that, that we are praying for you. If you need anything, please contact a deacon or an elder or contact myself, and we will try to minister to you in any way that we can. In the meantime, God bless you, and I hope to see you soon.